Hi everybody, I'm back. This is the second half of the grooming tools and supplies in my massive box of uh, fun video. I thought I could get it all done in one video, but apparently I own too much stuff. So um, in the first video, which you can find on the channel also, I talked about um, the shampoo and conditioner that I use for bathing, how often we bathe, and the fact that you really need a good forced air dryer. I realized after I finished the video that I didn't tell you what kind of forced air dryer I have. I actually have a really affordable one. There are all price ranges ranging from a um, couple hundred to a thousand dollars. You don't need a thousand dollar dryer, especially if you're not a show dog person. I have the Free Paws, F-R-E-E-P-A-W-S dryer that you can get on Amazon. And it comes, it's, it comes with the hose attachments as well as a stand attachment, as well as a stand that it bolts into. So you can use it as a stand dryer or a hose dryer. We can do a video and show you all that stuff in the future, but it's very affordable. It's uh, around between $250 and $300. Um, and it comes with all that stuff included. So that's probably the lower end and it's four horsepower. It's the lower end. It also has two features I consider indispensable, which are adjustable air. So when you have a young dog or a dog that's not used to being groomed, uh, especially with the forced air dryer, you can turn the air all the way down. So it blows very softly so you can get them used to it. It doesn't just blow all the intense air. And then you can turn it up slowly. It's a dial. So it's not like even set, it's not like low, medium, high. It's a dial. So you can slowly turn the forced air up uh, and get them used to that. And second of all is the heat options. You can do no, low, or high heat. I never use high heat on a Pekingese, but you can do no or low heat depending on what you need. So it's a great dryer and I highly recommend it. Okay, so now on to the second part of the uh, video. We did brushes and combs in the last one, um, as well as the nail care products I have, which are fairly limited. Um, so now we're gonna go on and I'm gonna talk about scissors and shears. Not everybody needs scissors and shears. Some of you guys are gonna wanna clip your dogs and we can talk about that in a future video, but like I said, I don't clip my dogs, so I'm not gonna talk about that right now. But everyone who grooms their peaks needs a good pair of scissors and I'll tell you why. So I have a pair of scissors that are fairly generic. I think the brand is Blazer. Um, they're hair scissors, human hair scissors. I actually inherited them from my husband's um, ex-girlfriend. Um, she was a hairdresser. She left these um, after they broke up. So I just kind of took them. Um, I don't think they're very expensive actually, but really any pair of good trimming scissors about this size will work. What you need to do if you buy the cheap ones, you just need to take them to a scissor or um, clipper sharpening place. Uh, most towns have a, it's easy to Google like scissor sharpening, knife sharpening and get them professionally sharpened. And then even cheap scissors turn into expensive scissors once you get them sharpened. So get a sharp pair of scissors and you need these absolutely because you need to trim the hair on your dog's paw pads. Even if you're not cutting any of the rest of their hair, you need to be able to trim their paw pads so that they're have a good grip on surfaces that they walk on and the hair between their pads doesn't mat. Um, so get yourself one pair of good hair scissors. Uh, also, some of you guys are going to have dogs where the hair on their nose roll points towards their eyeballs, um, which doesn't happen in um, most properly bred show peaks. But again, pet quality peaks are peaks that just have any sort of like uh, genetic um, uh, difference from, from the standard of quality might have a nose roll where their hair points towards their eyes on that roll. And keeping that hair trimmed is going to be essential for you guys so that they don't get um, eye sores or ulcers. So get yourself a good pair of trimming scissors. And then I also have a pair of thinning shears. Um, these are about $75. I got them at a dog show. They're pretty expensive. I think you can get cheaper trimming shears. And again, get them sharpened and they'll probably be equivalent. Um, areas of your dog you might want to thin um, include the top of the back uh, below the tail so that the tail lays flatter or anywhere where your dog's coat is just really thick and you still want to have the look of a full coat, but you just want it to be a little easier to maintain. You can use thinning shears. And again, we can talk about that in a future video. There's not a ton of uses for these in peaks. Um, and in fact, in show peaks, you know, trimming is considered taboo. Um, People do it here and there very subtly, but you're not supposed to be trimming your dogs much in the show ring, but um, they can be useful if you want to grab a pair of them. 
Okay, now on to products. So I wasn't gonna show you the shampoos because they're just downstairs, but I will show you all my grooming products because uh, I love some of them. Okay, number one, and uh, a lot of people are probably gonna think I'm insane for, for loving this and showing this to you guys. So a very prominent um, international uh, famous Pekingese lady who I adore uh, showed me this. Uh, this is not a product that very many people in America use. You'll hear a lot of people talk about how artificial ingredients and silicone are the enemies and you want all natural everything. And that's very socially, uh, social media based. Um, if you actually know the science of hair, you know, hair is, hair is dead. Uh, hair is dead keratin. Um, you can't kill it with products because it's already dead. All you can do is maintain it or damage it. Um, so people talk about silicone drying the hair out, and that's actually not true. Uh, if you look at the science behind it, uh, the silicones that are in grooming sprays are water-based silicones. They coat the hair. They actually protect the hair. They make it so that when you brush, uh, your brush slides over the hair instead of catching on the hair and tearing it. Um, and then the next time you wash them, it washes right out. So they're not drying like everybody says they are necessarily. So they're water-based. It's usually dimethicone. So this product does have silicone and some other things in it. But uh, they swore to me that I would love this and I love this as much as they said. This is called Coat and Skin Conditioner by, Do by Mr. Groom. Coat and Skin Conditioner Mr. Groom. You get this on Cherry Brook. Um, this will make uh, your hard to brush dogs. You, I spray it, it's an aerosol. I spray it right down near the skin um, in their undercoat and it'll make your brush go right through. It's great at getting the dogs who have undercoat that's coming out to get their undercoat to come out um, because it, it loosens up all that dead hair and just gets it to come right out. Um, I adore this stuff. I don't use it every single time I groom, um, but it's super great. It's also great to spray on mats and tangles to get them out easily. The other thing you need for mats is basic baby powder. Cornstarch based, try not to get talc. Um, we all know that talc inhaled can damage the lungs. So I just try not to use talc based products on um, any animal or around myself. So cornstarch based baby powder, sprinkle it in mats, scrunch them with your fingers to work the powder in and you can get the mats out a lot easier. So either this or a silicone based spray, um, both work. I would try both and see which works better for you. Um, so powder is great down near the skin to get out um, matted and tangled hair. That leads me to another silicone-based spray that people are going to probably murder me for talking about. So I came from the horse world. This is a horse spray. It's called Shoshin. It's a silicone-based hairspray. It's water-soluble. It'll wash out the first time you wash your peak. Um, it's great for getting out tangles. It's slicker than the Dr. Groom. So this is like a super silicone spray. So this is really going to make your dog's hair slippery. So I don't use this in my show dogs too much because you don't want their hair to be really slick. But there are two circumstances in which I use this. I get mats out with this. So soak the mat and then comb through it. It'll come out pretty good. I also use this on my dog and the bitch that you saw that has white hair because silicone repels things, right? So I spray this on the bottom of her to keep her from getting stained. And it's a miracle. So your, your, your white dogs, if you don't want them to get stains in their white hair, yeah, put this on them. It's great. The other great thing, if you live where there's winter, and I'm in Vermont, so whoo, we got a lot of winter around here. This will keep your dogs from getting those thick snowballs in their chest when they go out in the snow. So you spray this on their chest and their under hair before they go out in the snow, and you won't get snowballs in the bottom of them. So Shoshin, you can get it on Amazon, horse websites. Um, it's pretty cheap and affordable. And again, um, as long as you're bathing your dogs, you do need to bathe the dogs regularly. So if you're using a silicone based product, you need to bathe them every 10 days to two weeks. But if you're doing that, don't be scared to use silicone sprays. It, it washes out. It's not going to like destroy their hair. I, I promise. I promise all you anti-silicone people. Send me your photos because my dogs look great and I use these things all the time. So, Okay, now I'm going to get into the more specialized um, grooming products that I use because my dogs are show dogs that you can use if you want. If you don't need to, you can stop listening. But um, this is an Isle of Dogs products. So I talked about the shampoo and the conditioner. This is a grooming spray called Strengthen. Isle Strengthen. 
Um, I use this daily on my dog's ear fringes. Um, the bottom of their chest hair and on their skirts around the bottom uh, near their feet. This is a, a spray that makes the hair, it's a keratin based spray. It makes the hair more elastic, uh, resistant to damage and helps it keep it from breaking so that, that hair can grow long and strong. Um, my dogs are just dogs. They don't live in kennels. They play all day long. So they grab each other's hair. They tug on it. As much as I try to tell them not to, they just do it. So this is what I use to keep those hairs from breaking so that they can grow long, nice uh, show length fringes and coats um, without breaking. And it smells nice and it doesn't take a lot of it. A little goes a long way. Um, so I, I recommend this if you're trying to keep your dog's coat from breaking. I'll strengthen. These two are for grooming, uh, again, kind of for show purposes. Um, this is Plush Puppy uh, Volumizing Spray, and this is another Isle of Dogs one, Isle of Dogs Texture. So these are both what you're gonna use if you wanna make your dog's coat look fuller uh, than it already is. So you kind of use these, um, we use these on show day or the night before. They're the kind of thing where you spray, uh, you know, in, at a small volume and then either use a dryer to blow the hair or a brush to brush it out. And this is gonna make their, they're kind of the equivalent of human hairspray except they're not tacky um, as much as human hairspray is. They more just kind of coat the hair and make it a little stiffer so it stands out great. So if you're looking for a product to use uh, to make your dog's volume of hair in a certain area look fuller, I recommend both of these. Um, they're a little different. So this one, the Isle of Dogs texture is a little stickier than the Plush Puppy. Um, the Plush Puppy though is has a little stronger smell, uh, kind of like makes the dog smell a little antiseptic or something. It's kind of just personal preference. They both work really well. They both make the dog's hair go, you know, from you know what it normally is to like woo big and poofy. So I recommend both these products. It's kind of just test which one you like better and which one works on your dog. Okay, now we're on to the very last category, which is miscellaneous things in my box that uh, I use either regularly or for specific circumstances that I think you should probably carry around as well. A pet toothbrush and toothpaste. I know, don't roll your eyes at me. It's terrible to try to brush your Pekingese's teeth, but Peaks have terrible teeth. They got a lot of really big teeth crowded in a fairly small space and they get dental disease. They get dental disease and it's a major health problem. Dental disease leads to heart disease as well as leading to just dental disease where their teeth rot and fall out. So when you got a puppy or a young dog, start brushing their teeth. Also, hope that you have a dog that likes to chew on hard things. I highly recommend bully sticks antlers and um, anything, you know, anything that's really hard like that. If you can get your dog to chew on something hard, that's fabulous. They'll do a lot of the cleaning themselves, but they don't really clean their kind of front teeth very well. Um, so brush your dog's teeth. I know it's a pain, but do it. This one is a game changer. Everyone needs to buy this. This is Zymox Odic. Peaks are prone to ear infections. You will read all kinds of insane conspiracy theories all over the internet about people who have recurrent ear infections. They'll tell you, your dog's allergic to corn. Take corn out of their diet and their ear infections will go away. It's all nonsense. My best friend is a small animal vet. I'm a physician. I understand how infections actually work and they don't have very much to do with corn allergy. They have a fact to do that you have a deep ear canal and a dog with a big ear and hair and warmth and heat and things that just grow yeast because it's a space that's prone to yeast. So I had my very, um, my, my, my puppy Mac that I showed you before, he had ear infections when I first got him and we would give the vet recommended antibiotics in the ear. It would go away. It would come right back. It happened three times. Then a breeder told me about this and he has not had an ear infection in seven months since I started using this. The beauty of this product is you don't have to clean their ears. I repeat that. Not only do you not have to clean their ears, you should not clean their ears. The way this works is that it feeds off of the gunk inside of their ear and it uses that plus the enzyme in here to clean the ear out with the gel. 
So what you do is just once a week, when you, or once every two weeks or whenever you do your bath, just squeeze this gel into their ear canal. Do it instead of cleaning their ear. And this gel, the enzyme, eats all the gunk and bacteria and prevents ear infections. And I have not had an ear infection since I started doing this. So thank you, Kathy Tortilla. I love you for telling me about this because we have no ear issues because we use this. And all that vet prescribed stuff was not working at all. So get yourself some Zymoxotic. Do it. You will not regret it. Okay, only a couple more. Pekingese nose butter. If you have a dog that licks their nose a lot, I can't lick my nose, but if you do, some of them get dry cracked noses. Right now, I don't have a dog that does that. I bought this for my first dog that passed away because he did, um, and it works great. It's just a moisturizer. You can put it on their nose. It keeps it from drying and cracking. It's non-toxic. It smells pretty yummy. It's great. It's Pekingese nose butter. You get it on Amazon. You can also put it on paw pads. If you have a dog that has cracked paw pads, again, none of mine have that problem, but um, if you do, same thing, paw pads. And then lastly, the next video I do is gonna be face care. You need to do face care in your Pekingese at least every other day. Um, and a product that I use as part of my face care um, when my dog, if my dogs start to get um, a little bit of yeasty stuff around their nose, and I'll tell you how to detect that. But if they're getting that, this is the product that gets rid of it very quickly. Uh, it's available on Chewy, again, uh, Chewy.com. It's Duoxo, D-O-U-X-O Foam. And it's kind of a gentle um, antibacterial and antifungal uh, foam. And I use this a lot if their faces start to get stinky and yeasty. Um, so picking up a bottle of this, and this it lasts forever. I've had this bottle. I have four dogs, and I've had this bottle for a year, and it's probably about a third full still. So I would grab yourself a bottle of Duoxo. Okay. The last thing I have to say is it's not a specific product, but you never want to brush or comb your dog's hair completely dry. You also don't want to brush or comb your dog's hair soaking wet, like right after a bath. The reason is when the hair is dry, it's more brittle and prone to breaking. And when it's soaking wet, it's soft and also prone to breaking. So when you brush or comb your dog, you want to do it with just a light mist of moisture to make it fairly damp. You can do that with just a bottle of water. And I'm going to tell you this fun little trick uh, that I determined myself. You can buy a misting bottle and they're kind of expensive. Um, you can buy a spray bottle and a spray bottle sprays really heavy and will make their hair pretty wet. This is a bottle that I use. This is water. It's kind of washed off, but it's just water um, that... So you go to Walmart and for 99 cents, you buy a bottle of sun in. It's like a hair bleaching spray to make blonde, beautiful women's hair blonder. Buy it, dump it, dump it in the garbage or whatever. Rinse the bottle a bunch of times to make sure none's left in it. This is the best misting bottle ever and it's 99 cents. It makes like this beautiful fine mist. It never ever screws up or, you know, I've been using the same one for two years now. Um, this is the best, cheapest misting bottle you can buy. So that's one of my fun little secrets. So always before you brush or comb your dog, you want to mist the hair before you do it to make sure that you're not brushing a really dry coat. Um, you can just use water. Like I said, some people mix their own grooming sprays, which is often like a kind of 20 to one dilution of 20 um, parts of water to one part of conditioner. So a tiny part of conditioner, but that's very personal choice. Okay, so that's it. That's everything in my box. Um, and the next video we're going to do, not tonight because now I'm tired, but the next video I'm going to do is going to be face care. So hopefully tomorrow or the next day we will start on the actual grooming with my model dogs and we'll talk about caring for your Pekingese's adorable little squishy faces. Have a great night and a great week, everybody. Bye.